welcome back to my channel. Today I'm still in Xining in Shanghai province in the northwest of China and I'm here today with Ben. Uh, ben is a YouTuber and he's been living in China for many years so he's gonna tell us a bit about his experience of well what he's doing in China. So cool. well why don't you introduce yourself? Great thanks Chris. Yeah. Um, so yeah like she said my name is Ben Cubbage. I've lived in Xining in western China about nine years and I have an adventure travel business called Elevated Trips. Our website's elevatedtrips.com and we take foreigners out and uh, we, we take them out to the Tibetan Plateau and give them a really culturally immersive experience so they can experience Tibetan culture. That's awesome. Yeah. So can you tell mm. us like why did you come to China mm. and like have you, what other countries have you lived in before? Great question. Yeah. Uh, why did I come to China? My wife and I for, we had just gotten married, we backpacked about 4,000 kilometers, about uh, 2,600 miles in what's called the Pacific Crest Trail. Nice. And uh, that, that runs from Mexico to Canada in America. So and through the Rockies and all that uh, stuff. Yeah, right? kind of the, the highest mountains, uh, 4,000 4, meter mountains in, wow. in America. And uh, we'd finished that, we were backpackers, kind of hippie hiker people. And uh, we had a friend that lived in Xining and invited us to come work work for him. We'd never thought about China. We, we didn't know anything really about it. Uh, it wasn't really on our map. And then suddenly he invited us to come and work. We were between jobs and we moved out here and just, just <laughs> and stayed. And you stayed. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. cool. So, yeah. And you've lived in Xining all the time. Uh, nine years in Xining um, for our whole time in China. And then before that, my wife and I actually met in Africa uh, oh. on this big hospital ship called the Mercy Ship. But where, okay. where we were doing community development work in Africa. So we've, you know, our relationship has always been about traveling. So China has made a lot of sense for us. We like living overseas and yeah. you know, like experiencing new cultures. Yeah. All right. So what mm. did you do before you became a traveler and uh, mm. tour organizer? So I've actually been a tour guide for about 15 years. So pretty much since I, gra I graduated university with a degree in with a bachelor's of science. And from that point on, I was a, I was a hiking guide. And I've just taken that, that love for nature and the mountains and culture in, into China. That's pretty yeah. cool. So, uh, what kind of people do you show around? Like, do you mostly cater to foreigners or do you cater to Chinese? Or like, what's About 95% of our trips are foreigners, just because I'm a foreigner. I, I know what foreigners want. Uh, we do a, a few team building things with some local Chinese companies. Like, we did a team building with a five star hotel here. But 95% um, are foreigners. About 50% of those are expats that live in China, you know, yeah. live in Beijing, Shanghai, just want to get out of the big cities and travel around the Tibetan Plateau. Uh, and the other 50% come from America, Australia, and just want to experience some, some rugged terrain and see some beautiful people. All right. Yeah. So yeah. what kind of places do you take people to? Yeah. So we try to take pe people to places that are pretty off the map, uh, pretty off the beaten track. Uh, Labrong Monastery, places around Qinghai province, yeah. uh, Gansu province, places that almost, if you Google it, you're probably not going to find a lot of information on it, yeah. uh, just because it's kind of a bit of a secret destination for travelers. Yeah. So we try to get it out of, off the tourist yeah. path to, to places that have almost seen no foreigners before. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to include a map right now so you can see awesome. some of the areas that his company offers tours to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what kind of trips can people do? Mm. In those uh, areas. Probably our most popular trip is like a seven day trip. Uh, it combines doing some Tibetan homestays. Uh, we sleep in a real Tibetan tent and learn how to make yak yogurt. We do a couple day hikes. We visit some monasteries. So it's this whole kind of cultural immersion and engagement thing where we do some adventure and trekking combined with that. Oh, that sounds so, awesome. Yeah. So do you like do people hike all the way or do you like have transportation? Do you mm. ride horses or camels or yaks or yeah. do you take uh, like a off-road vehicle or something? Yeah, all the above, uh, just depending what people want. A, a lot of our trips... But no yaks, are, yeah. right? <laughs> we do, well, At times we ride yaks, but mostly for a photo op. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, some of our trips are, you know, seven days of pure backpacking where you're sleeping in a tent every night. Uh, not everyone is interested in sleeping in a tent at 14,000 feet, so... Uh, I, 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 the, the other part of our trips take to take people into hotels where we drive three or four hours every day. We, we see in a monastery, we do a little hike behind the monastery, and then we sleep in a well, usually a three or four horse star hotel near mm. near the monastery. Uh, okay, Ben. So, what are your mm. uh, like? What's your advice for people who do this kind of trip for the first time? Let's say somebody wants to do a one week uh, hike through the mountains and they've never done this before. Like, what's what should they bring? Mm. What's your advice? Like, how can people cope with this especially yeah. if they're maybe not exercising a lot like me sure like sure. i'm a little lazy so yeah yeah that's yeah fine. what, what yeah, would yeah. someone like i what how mm. do i get 
prepared for it? How can I prepare for a trip like that? Great question. So I think the, the first thing is mm -hmm. to really understand altitude and to know, just acclimatize slowly, you know. Uh, the, the motto is sort of uh, climb high, sleep low. So always try to sleep, you know, as low as possible. We our trips start in Xining at about 2,300 meters. Then we often go up to 3,000 meters, and then sometimes 3,500. But we're doing that over three to five days. So don't come to Xining and then go up to high altitude the very next day. Spend a couple of days in Xining, two or three days, and then from there you use Xining as a base camp to uh, acclimatize slowly. The other thing I'd say is, of course, what, you know, in the mountains, weather always changes so fast. Um, so bring lots of layers, bring lots, you know, lots of wicking clothes, um, bring a nice puffy a rain jacket. Even in the summer, you can, you can be up at 4,000 meters and it can be snowing up there, right? So it can start really nice and then in three hours the weather changes super quickly. So just uh, really dial in your packing list. Um, we, you know, we have, we'll put a link down here to the packing list if you want to check that out. And uh, yeah, so really it's important to have, have your clothes dialed in. Travel light, but, but have lots of various types of layers. Yeah. Also, if you want to see some uh, yeah. footage of the treks and yeah. uh, trips that he offers, mm -hmm. uh, you can check out his own channel, which I'm going to link in the description below, of course, because he has a ton of videos, and I've seen quite a few already, and they're beautiful. Like He does great editing, great music, and really nice. Like I would love to go on a trip like this, but currently I don't have the time to do it, um, but I hope in the future I can. So, I have another question. What is like the most challenging kind of trip that you offer? The most Pro extreme one? Uh, probably the most extreme trip we offer is, uh, it's about a 17 day trip where we, we actually start in Lhasa. We go to Everest Base Camp, which is 5,200 meters, so yeah. that's already high. Okay. Uh, we actually literally drive right up to Everest Base Camp, but after that, we're hiking over through Mount Kailash, which is 5,600 meters. Uh, okay. the, the high pass is 5,600 meters. It's very high, 18,000 feet. So, um, you know, you're, you're acclimatizing slowly over seven or eight days to get there, but still, anytime you're hiking over 18,000 feet, even with a day pack, it's pretty exhausting. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty relatively acclimatized at altitude, and I was still pretty exhausted. But um, I th a lot of people do that trip every year. It's just, but it's pretty rugged. So, so this would be yeah. the kind of trip for the more experienced. Yeah, if you've, you've done the backpacking thing, you've done some, you have some multi-day backpack ex adventures under your belt. This would be a good like next step for you. Yeah. Beautiful way to experience the Himalayas. Yeah. So out of all the places mm. uh, in China that you've traveled to, um, which one is your favorite and why? Oh, no one's ever heard of this, but my answer is going to be, um, it's called Nangchen, N-A-N-G-C-H-E-N. Do you have a um, video about it? I do. I, okay, yeah, well then, uh, you know, we can show the people. Show, we can show the video, what, what it looks like. Um, no one's ever heard of Nangchen, uh, but if you drive 12 hours south of Xining in southern Qinghai province, right on the Tibetan Autonomous Region border, and keep going past Yushu, uh, you'll reach this town called Nangchen. It's just beautiful. It's like the... the the Rockies of, of China, just really beautiful yeah. mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and well, you said you organize trips to different provinces to uh, Tibet, mm -hmm. Qinghai, Gansu, Sichuan. Yeah, that's right. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. And what are the major differences between these provinces? Especially, I think Gansu is probably the most different from yeah. all the rest. Yeah. Um, I'd say the most difference is uh, probably about the culture. You know, Yunnan has every six, every of all the 56 also ethnicities, you know, right, yeah. right there, you know. Um, uh, Sichuan, you have, you have the food and the, the hot pot and the spiciness. Yeah. And, um, and then Gansu, of course, has, you know, has, has a lot of mosques and has a lot of Islamic culture as well. So there's just variations of differences between the ethnicities that live there and the, the regional foods, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when you, when you take people on trips to like Gansu, do you go to the desert, for example? We do do trips in the Silk Road. Um, where we where we go through Zhangye, Dunhuang, Jiayiguan, uh, and we act, we can do um, ride a ride a camel in the desert as well. So, yeah. yeah. So we do we see some parts of the desert, oh, which is cool. nice. Yeah. yeah. So Ben, you also have two kids, right? I do. Yeah. Uh, Phoebe and Bear. They're five and seven years Bear. old. Bear. Yeah, cute. that's a cute name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they go to kindergarten right here in China. They're pretty much the only white kids in their whole kindergarten. So you know that's fun. It's fun to do the expat life thing and have them learn Chinese. So how do they adapt to Chinese life? I mean, have they lived outside of China? Uh, at never. All? They were they were made in China and have been raised their whole life. Uh, in China, so that's all they know. You know, they they've really almost never been to McDonald's in their whole life. We don't even, we don't have a McDonald's here, so oh, they okay. they would we rather have a Starbucks, but we, no McDonald's. We have three Starbucks, but no McDonald's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know, they'd rather eat lamian and minpian 
uh, and the, the Qinghai local specialty is the McDonald's just because that's kind of what they grew up with. So it's fun. I, I really love exposing them to the new culture and the new ideas and wow. different worldviews and having, having them, having them grow, grow up in that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. what is it like to experience China as a parent of foreign mm -hmm. kids? Sure, it has its challenges, to be honest. And I think any foreign parent, especially if you have blonde kids, you know this. Uh, Do you know, people touch them? Oh, all the time. Uh, Super touchy. Which is, you know, it's, it's nice. Chinese people, they love kids so much. They love to hold them, they love to pick them up. But they often do it without asking, they don't ask, and there's often yeah. very few boundaries for that, and so that can be a little bit hard for parents. You know, when when you have when you're walking in public and your kid is just this huge attention magnet, and there's yeah. there's very few private spaces for that for that kid to just have their own personal space. So that can be a little hard. Uh, we've managed it because we've taught our kids how to say, if you want to take a picture with me, you have to give me five kwai. So, <laughs> do people give them money? They really make a lot of money from it, actually. They, awesome. I think they have I a little thought, piggy bank. I thought yeah. of doing this if I go to any like yeah, smaller yeah. places. Mm -hmm. A few years ago, I, had a, I worked in a summer camp for 10 days in a small yeah. place in the yeah. north, or in the actually center of Shanxi province, yeah. called Luochuan. And it, it was like, there were no foreigners in that town ever before so we got a lot of attention and people just yeah. constantly took pictures of us and I thought at some point I should just ask them for money I think in the future I might actually do that if you say it works hey no yeah. shit. you know at first yeah. I was kind of fun it was kind of fun to take a selfie with people but after the hundredth or two hundredth time you're kind of like ah I wish I could just have my own space but so now yeah. our kids are fun with it because they make a little money from how it how much have they made so far oh they probably made uh, like a hundred quai each I imagine I, I don't know okay. so <laughs> that, 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 they buy awesome. little snacks and stuff yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool yeah. Um, so that, that's my, my big warning. Is for, uh, there's obviously a lot of pluses to living out here. Uh, it's fun. It's for, for an adventurous family. It's a really good fit, I think. But you got to realize that you know, there's some negatives, too, that you know, your yeah. kids are going to get a lot of attention. You gotta, and you have to learn how to deal with that. Otherwise, you'll, uh, you'll be estranged from the culture. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so uh, do you have any plans of like, how, how long are you going to stay in China? Or do you have any plans of moving elsewhere? Do you want to go sure. back to the States at some point? Like, what's in the future? I personally love, I love living in China. It, it's a really great fit for me. Uh, it's just, I feel like my wife and I have found our niche. We'd love to be here forever, you know. Yeah. So, um, as long as we can get a visa to be out here, we'd, yeah. we'd love to be out here. We love, we love doing what we're doing. Yeah. So. Uh, can you introduce your YouTube channel? Sure. So that people know what they can find yeah, on okay. their... So if you're looking uh, for adventure China. travel uh, around Qinghai, Gansu, Sichuan, Yunnan, and Tibet, uh, we're, we're happy to help you with travel advice. We try to provide cool pictures, drone photos, and travel advice about you know how to get to places. So if you want to travel on your own, if you want to do it on your own as a traveler, that's great. The information is there for you to do that. Uh, and if you want us want some help arranging it, then we're happy to help you arrange some of those tours as well. So, yeah. so <clears throat> what are your uh, I don't know handles on Instagram or? Cool. Where can people find you? So Instagram, uh, I'm elevated underscore trips. Um, on Facebook, we're just elevated trips, and um, yeah. So you can find us, find us there. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for the interview. Yeah. And great. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> this is so weird. What am I gonna say? Just like you can sign off for me. And say cool. something about subscribe to the channel and like Sweet. comment and awesome. you know awesome. something like that. Cool. Well, awesome. Thanks, guys, for your time. Chris is awesome. She's got a sweet YouTube channel. She's been doing it a while. She's got some good content on traveling and culture in China. If you're traveling and culture, it's a must-see. So subscribe to Chris. She's got some good stuff going on. And we'll see you in Western China. <laughs>